All right, so let's go over the problems on page 302. Uh, and these kind of deal with the first part of the chapter that we've already gone over. So A, a purchasing agent orders materials from a supplier that he partially owns. Um, so first of all, the question is, uh, a purchasing agent should not be able to order you know, any type of material that a company that he partially owns is involved. Now, the question is, did the organization that he works for know about this? And in the previous um, chapter, one of the problems I talked about a disclosure, conflict of interest, interest disclosure, uh, surely owing, owning part of a company that you're, the company you work for buys from is something that would need to go on that. So there's a question of, did he disclose that or not? Now, just the fact that he orders from that supplier that he partially owns doesn't necessarily mean it's most the is completely illegal or unethical. It could be the best supplier, but he, this person, the purchasing agent, should not be in the position to make that decision. That uh, ordering that type of material should be passed off to a different purchasing agent, who then makes the decision what supplier to buy whatever material from. So if we're buying widgets and the supplier provides widgets, somebody else, another purchasing agent needs to be the one making that decision. All right, K, a purchasing agent adds a new record to the supplier master file. This company does not exist. Subsequently, the purchasing agent submits invoices for the fake company for various cleaning services and the invoice is paid. Now, this purchasing agent did the wise thing about submitting fake invoices for cleaning services because uh, services are one of the things that are not checked. You can't count it like you do inventory type items. So sometimes they go under the radar. But the bigger problem here is uh, that the supplier can add something to the master file. And in some companies, it is okay for a purchasing agent to be able to add it to the master file but it doesn't get approved until somebody else reviews it. So there has to be somebody, it doesn't matter whether or not this person, the purchasing agent entered it or not, it's the fact that it really didn't get reviewed before becoming approved and approved supplier. So this person who does the review needs to make sure, you know, check, uh, do they have, there's a numbering system, it's called Dunn's number, that all businesses apply for. Do they have one of those numbers? Uh, check the street address. You can look on Google Maps now to see if it's an empty lot. Because if you're gonna use a fake address, you don't wanna use somebody else's business address. Uh, so things like that to make sure that it truly does exist. Giving a call, um, you know, to making sure who you're talking to, things like that. Okay, so let's go ahead and continue with the next section. All right, so in the revenue cycle, uh, goods are shipped, but in the expenditure cycle, we're going to receive them. So usually this is a receiving department. Uh, in most companies, this would be separate from shipping, depending on the volume. So the receiving department is the one that accepts the inventory or the deliveries from the supplier. Then the goods are transferred to the inventory department or inventory stores department where they're placed until they are needed. Uh, you saw pictures of the large warehouse at Amazon. So they're stored in those towers that are carried around by robots. So once the goods are received, you have a receipt of goods that gets entered into the system and then is communicated to inventory control. So somebody updates the inventory records. Now, if you have a large ERP system, once those goods are in, entered, that they're received, uh, usually that entry is made into inventory. So the major responsibility, so what the receiving department needs to do is first of all, verify that the goods are ordered. Do I have a purchase order number and does it match the types of goods on that purchase order? Then they should count the delivered goods. Now, depending on what it is, uh, you may count more boxes, for example, if you order uh, 10,000 bolts uh, of a particular size, they probably come in boxes of 100 or 1,000, you would count those individual boxes. Uh, and then, of course, examine goods for damage. 
Now, we're not going to go down to quality to make sure, you know, uh, I know there's some parts that if you're manufacturing that needs to be within um, a fraction, a half a millimeter, which if you know is virtually nothing, the receiving department is not going to check that. They're making sure that the box of light bulbs you sent are not all cracked. I mean, they're checking for obvious damage. So then they file a receiving report and you created several receiving reports in your SUA project that basically has the date, where they received from the purchase order number, um, and basically the description and item number of everything we received. So in the quantity. You do want these signed or at least the individual logged in to uh, show so you see who made those and uh, who received those and inspected them. So the receiving employee, uh, basically the first thing they do is compare the purchase order on the packing slip to the purchase order in the system to make sure that these are the right goods and it matches and make sure we do have a purchase order number that's valid. Um, an old scam and actually probably still happens some is to send goods to a company that they didn't order and see if you can get them to receive them and once they receive them they're liable to pay for them. Uh, unless you prove it's a fraud, which is a little more challenging. I also mentioned they count the goods, expect for, uh, examine for damage, and sign the receiving report. Now, there can be things that are wrong, and it's not receiving's job to resolve these. They need to send them to purchasing. So first of all, it could be the quantity. Um, we ordered 10, we received 9. Now, hopefully the invoice that we get also shows that we have nine, but we wanna make sure to show that this is an exception to make sure to follow up with that later that we only get charged for nine. The goods could be damaged or are of poor quality. You know, if uh, we received some red parts at John Deere that would have been poor quality that we got had to send them back, right? That's something that purchasing or that the receiving doc would catch. Um, Purchasing department must resolve the take then resolve the situation. So there's a couple things they can do. They could correct the invoice, work with the supplier to either get a new invoice or correct it. We could return those goods, especially those red ones, and or we could get a deduction. All right, so there's really the two steps here in the data flow diagram. We accept the delivery and then we count and expect inspect the goods and we send it over to inventory stores. All right, some things to make it a little bit more efficient. Uh, first of all, barcodes and RFID tags for all those goods uh, helps us, you know, track things a little bit better, a little bit more accurate in the data entry. We also want EDI for shipping notices. So we want to know when goods are going to come in. You should expect this truck between 10 and 11 on Tuesday morning. Uh, that is also with the satellite technology will also do actually, but a lot more precise. And one of the areas that there are uh, costs that can frequently be potentially cut are freight costs. Um, so looking at freight, uh, you know, because you can, that's usually not put into the purchase order as the official contract of what we're going to pay. So, you know, companies could all of a sudden just double freight. And actually that's been a fraud with the U.S. government for quite a while. Um, the U.S. government was known not to really have any restrictions on what you could charge for freight. So I believe it was a company out of Wisconsin actually was sending things overseas to um, either Afghanistan or Iraq, I forget which one, but you know, it was a $5 item and they were charging $50,000 for shipping and it would go through and get paid. So that obviously I'm sure has gotten changed since then, but for a long time, that was a hole that kind of got left open. Uh, accepting unordered items. So I already mentioned that. So when you receive the items, you need to make sure there is a purchase order before they're accepted. Uh, you don't want to even let them in the door or pass the receiving dock if they haven't been ordered. So receiving is supposed to count. Now it's easy to make a mistake in counting. 
The first thing you want to do is make sure that uh, the receiving employees have what we call a blind purchase order. So this means the amounts are not in the purchase order. So they know that we ordered widgets and they enter that we received nine. Um, and the reason is if I just counted 99 widgets and if I knew we were supposed to get 100, I'd, been, I'd be like, eh, close enough. Or I made the mistake, it must be 100 and assume that we have 100. Well, you do that every time your inventory is going to be off. Making sure your receiving employees sign the receiving reports, uh, that helps create accountability. And also if you're having certain parts, you can kind of use it to trace back, uh, do we have somebody who maybe shouldn't be receiving, maybe their skills are somewhere else, you know, counting is a little off all the time. Um, offer incentives to catch discrepancies. I always kind of say use incentives wisely. Uh, if I knew I got some cash bonus for catching mistakes, I'd probably be trying to make a deal with my buddies. Hey, make a mistake, I'll catch it here, you catch mine uh, type thing, but it, it can work. And document the transfer of goods, uh, use barcodes. So uh, the transfer of goods, so anytime when I move from receiving to the inventory stores, that transfer should be documented. Barcodes and RFID tags can help that as well. And then uh, have the system flag any differences between the received and ordered goods, and that should be sent to purchasing. So services, we can't really put them on a truck and send it to the receiving department. Uh, we can't count them. So really there's other ways to do that. So first of all, if I'm a supervisor and I'm the one who contracts for snow removal, uh, first of all, if snow removal is not being done, somebody will probably notice, but there are other things that won't. I'm going to be held responsible. So if it's not getting done and we're still paying the bills, it's going to you know, be my job potentially on the line. Part of that is also to look at budgeted expenses. So if I have budgeted expenses of $20,000 a year for legal fees and it's March and I've already spent that $20,000 and I don't know of any particular lawsuit, I might want to investigate. Because services are one of the easier things to commit fraud on uh, with the fake invoices. Partially, once again, because it's harder to check. There's no physical inventory to look for. And then periodic reviews of the suppliers. Um, basically, what can happen is if, if you get an invoice for a service, I'm the manager who is responsible for that. I have to sign off that, yes, we received it. Um, now, if I kept it within my budget, there's still a little room there for uh, potential fraud, but it's going to be a lot harder. Theft of inventory. Um, basically, all of these we talked about except for the last one in the last chapter. So segregate who receives the inventory, who records it, and who has custody. Now, um, who's you temporarily have custody when you receive it, but you transfer that to the inventory stores. Um, somebody else should usually record or record it automatically with the scanning. All right, take a couple minutes and go to problem one once again on page 302 and look at problems B and F. B is in boy, F is in Frank. 